Hi guys, my name is Eric Lazaro, and I'm going to present to you my project, which is self-healing materials. But before I go on to talk about it, here's a video to introduce my topic and give you a few ideas of what I'm going to discuss. So what you saw there is an example of a self-healing material, and like the video said, it can put itself back together, and which brings me to my next point, which is the definition of self-healing. So self-healing refers to polymeric materials that have the ability to regenerate after they have been, after they have been degraded, and it comes in two types, autonomic, in which there is no interaction, and not autonomic, in which there is. So virtually all materials are capable of natural or artificial degrading, and scientists today are still incorporating these concepts of healing processes in engineering materials. So we move on to the design of self-healing materials, and they consist of different types of systems, which with some particular emphasis on soul gel based material on soul, soul gel based layers, and a, uh, and a phase separator, which are dispersed in a polymer phase. And so the design of self-healing materials still continue to grow today. So basically, encapsulation of monomers and catalysts are key components for self healing for the self healing process. And this behavior really focuses on the specific molecular structures and the performance of polymers, which I will discuss later. So we move on to self-healing coatings. So self-healing coatings consist of a substrate that is protected from environmental exposure while providing a dense barrier for metal surfaces against a corrosive species. They're able to respond without any external human interaction or some environmental trigger. In order to repair these coating damages, they must incorporate microcapsules that contain film formers. And so yeah, so these film formers utilize polymerized healing agents to heal a particular damage. So moving on, I mentioned before that healing agents use microcapsulated catalysts. So these catalysts refer to micro-sized particles of solid liquid and gas in an inert shell, which you see in the diagram. So to discuss further, what you see is a crack, crack that forms in the matrix. Then the healing agent is released into the crack through capillary action as the microcapsule ruptures. And so thus the healing agent and catalyst come in contact and trigger polymerization. So what really goes on in self-healing materials is really important and I'll cover the chemistry of this phenomenon. So we, what we initially need is our DCPD, which is our liquid agent, our Grubbs catalyst, which, are, which is our internal chemical stimuli, which is dispersed in our matrix. And so the DCPD interacts with the Grubbs catalyst, uh, which is a ring opening metathesis polymerization, or what we would call ROMP. And this occurs in highly cross-linked polycyclopendine to form in coelacrack. And so healing is triggered by crack propagation through microcapsules in which the healing agent is released into the cracked plane. So ROMP polymerization is also demonstrated to be the, one of the most successful self-healing systems to, to date. And so here's what the ROMP mechanism looks like. So you have your DCPD monomer. It, uh, it interacts with the Grubbs catalyst and it initiates polymerization. And so even so the RMP mechanism developed by many scientists did have defects despite its success, such as poor dispersion of the Grubbs catalyst in the epoxy matrix, which becomes unstable to environmental conditions. And so improving the polymerization rate proved to be a failure due to numerous other kinetic parameters. So increasing the bulk polymerization rate significantly decreased the quality of healing. And so here are the graphs that show the healing efficient how the if it Healing efficiency came out. And so you're probably wondering how the self healing materials are used in technologies. And so we have electrohydrodynamics, and basically, self healing is achieved through components of, uh, polym of polymers, fibers, and electromagnetic wires. And they incorporate an electric field to 
uh, with neutral gas melt molecules to, to exchange momentum, creating ionic winds. And so these uh, wires serve as conductor and distribute heat uniformly. And we move on to co-deposition, in which electrolytic co-deposition can also be designed in self-healing anti-corrosive coatings. And so liquid corrosion inhibitors or nanoparticles contain absorbed corrosion inhibitors and are used in core material to synthesize micro or nano capsules. And thus, uh, the initiation of, of healing will thus heal a crack. And so you're probably wondering how these self-healing materials were, are applied. And self-healing materials are expected, expected in almost entirely all industries in the future. Self-healing materials development is either in the preliminary or product level. So these materials are yet to be available for many applications. And so we have an example of Nissan Motor Company and they're the first company to have a self-healing clear coat for car surfaces. We move on to the aviation industry, in which composites of aircrafts have grown significantly, and research still continues for hollow fibers, reinforced composites for recovering cracks and damages. We move on to the construction industry, in which, which is beneficial for structural metallic components for achieving long-term service life. And also the medical industry, in which we use self-healing composites for, biocompat for biocompatibility with the human body structure. And so to conclude, uh, although we use structural materials to initiate structural fa failures, such as microcracking and hidden damages, uh, there's still some uh, problems that still arise. And even uh, due to the fact that self-healing materials possess a great amount of potential, research still continues to explore new concepts in this arising field. And so, so yeah, we do. Even though that self-healing material still has these frequent problems that arise in autonomic detection of cracks and subsequent healing, we shouldn't disregard its potential in the near future for our daily uses.